Hey guys, it's Bub here. If you don't know, on this channel, we've made a ton of videos about Tiny10. However, I've never actually installed Tiny10 on physical hardware. I've always ran it inside of a virtual machine. And in my comments on my other Tiny10 videos, I've seen a ton of people asking, well, how can I get this to work on a real machine? Is it supported and do drivers work? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Tiny10 on this old Dell machine with 2GB of RAM and a Core 2 Duo. So this is ultimately the real test to see if Tiny10 can be used on an old machine as it's intended to. The first thing we have to do is press a key to boot from the USB that I made, and just like that we should be booting into the Tiny10 install USB. Alright, and here we are in the Windows 10 or Tiny10 installer. Now like I said, this is just the regular installer for Windows 10, there are some things that are removed, so we're just going to go ahead and go through this like we're setting up a regular version of Windows 10, deleting all the hard drive partitions that are on this computer, and just totally starting from scratch. Now of course, because this is Enterprise LTSB, I don't have a license key for this, and I would assume most people don't. One thing I am a little bit disappointed with with Tiny10 is that you cannot update Tiny10. I wish we could like upgrade it to Windows 11 or something and still keep the minimal amount of space, but unfortunately we can't do that. So now we're going to go ahead and click install to the unallocated space, and we're off. Alright, and for some reason we are getting the error that Windows could not install on this computer, so I guess we have to reinstall Windows? I'm not really sure what the deal is here. Let's try rebooting without the USB inserted and hopefully it's going to boot into Windows and work. And just like that a simple restart was somehow able to fix that error. We didn't have to reinstall Windows. We can just go ahead and proceed with the Windows setup. Now if I remember correctly this setup does throw some errors like out of box experience is missing. It totally skips for the Wi-Fi part so we're just going to enter the username Win and just skip the password and it should just go and I think give us a black screen which means that it is compressing the operating system doing everything that it needs to so we're gonna go ahead and let this run until we see the desktop and alright here we are inside of Tiny10 on the Core 2 Duo machine with 2 gigabytes of RAM and if you don't remember Tiny10 is very very minimal in fact this is all of the software that's already installed and just right off the bat, there are no sound drivers and no Wi-Fi or internet drivers. Now I do have this machine wired up to a network over Ethernet, so there's obviously just no network drivers that are supported for this machine, but that's pretty much okay. So yeah, let's just take a look at how this actually performs. So there's not a lot of tests we can really run, except just opening the applications that are installed on here. I'm sure you could figure out a way to actually get the Wi-Fi and networking things to work on here. However, I tried installing Wi-Fi drivers in my testing for this video, and they did not work at all. They would install, but then they wouldn't do anything. The developers of Tiny10 must have just completely removed any networking capability for physical computers, because it works perfectly fine in VMware. For just text editing, I mean, this seems relatively responsive here. I don't see any real problems just typing, so that seems pretty good to me. The trackpad speed is extremely slow, although I think there is a way to adjust that. Opening up the file explorer by just opening pictures, that did take a while, but hey, it did work. Let's see how much space we do have free. Yeah, we can see that is not a lot of space that's taking up. That's barely taking up any space compared to a regular Windows 10 installation. So let's just see if we can go take a look at the specs of this machine, just so I can show you if this is a Core 2 Duo with 2GB of RAM. And just If you've never seen Tiny10 before, just take a minute to look around, because this is an extremely bare operating system meant to run on low-end hardware like this. And like I said, here's a Core 2 Duo 2.4GHz P9400 with only 2GB of RAM installed. And again, like I pointed out, this is 10 Enterprise LTSC version 1809. I wish we could upgrade this to a newer version, but unfortunately that is not very possible. Because when you try to run the upgrader, it simply doesn't work. And when you go to update, there is no Windows update here. It is detecting a battery, which I think is a built-in Windows power management kind of thing. We can turn it all the way up to best performance and see how that goes. 
let's see how the task manager is doing let's see what it's using and how much ram is free so if we go to performance it's only using two percent roughly of the cpu and 700 megabytes of ram that is extremely low especially for windows 10 considering how intensive it usually is so although tiny 10 does not have networking or audio capabilities on this physical machine i'm sure that there's a way to figure it out if you're really invested in this if you want to get tiny 10 working on a machine you can probably take a ton of time and just work on it for probably an hour or two and get networking and sound to work however for me in my testing the few 10 minutes i spent on it i could not get any drivers to install on here but I'm sure with a graphics driver, this would actually run a little bit better because we can see some things in the UI are lagging. And again, I'm sure that's just the lack of a graphics driver. If we had a real Intel graphics driver, it would work probably perfectly fine. So besides those hurdles, Tiny10 could probably be used as a daily driver, and it actually runs pretty well on real hardware. My only concern would be updates. I believe LTSB is ending support very soon, this version, so you're going to be totally out of security updates. And there is really no way to get around that besides upgrading, which you can't run Windows Update. So, with that being said, thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. If you've ever installed Tiny10 on a real computer, let me know if you were able to get any of the drivers to work, and if you did, how, as maybe I can make a follow-up video to this. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.